welcome back to Bits Be Trippin'. It's been a little over a year since we've actually had a show and I'm real excited to come back and get in the swing of things with you guys. We had a solid run for almost a full year bringing you some really sick hardware in late 2013 through 2014. But as ASICs took over the show and really ran all the GPU miners really down into a hole and unprofitable, many folks like us just powered off our rigs and looked for brighter days. And all I can say now is with the success of Ethereum really growing pretty much exponentially over the last few months, it has brought us back in full swing. But we know you guys just don't want to see some old busted hardware that we've had laying around. So we went out and picked up some nice new stuff, pulled out some of the old familiar tools and built some rigs. So enough of all this back chatter. This is episode 26. This is your host, Carter. Let's get into this. So let's first start with what is Ethereum? Why are we back? What is this actual crypto? Is it a currency? What is it? In its simplest terms, it is a development platform that makes it easy to build decentralized apps. But that's mainly the jargon for the people that are actually going to be doing content on Ethereum, which a good platform is going to bring more people, which is going to cause more demand for it. So from a minor perspective, that's a good thing. But from the people that really are focused on our channel and what the point of what we're trying to bring is why would we want to put our hardware and our quote unquote workers to bolster this content? And quite simply, the value proposition is phenomenal right now for it. And that isn't just me talking about this. I'm talking Microsoft and Consensus are actually partnering to offer Ethereum blockchain as a service on the Microsoft Azure. So enterprise clients and developers can have a single click cloud based blockchain development environment. Again, why do miners care about this? Because the interest usually brings good revenue and a return for the working that we're doing on building this network up for these developers to have a nice solid platform. And what we here at BBT try to do is ensure that everybody has a clear clear and concise understanding of what they're getting into and how to do it because a healthy diversified mining network is good for all. So enough about the backstory. Let's get into what we were doing with this mining episode. And there's no better place to start than asking the very simple question is, what has changed since the last time of GPU mining in comparison to Ethereum? Meaning, does Ethereum have a different algorithm? Does it require different configurations? Is the hash rates kind of the same as Litecoin and the previous Dogecoin mining? And are there any gotchas? Well, for starters, Ethereum is proof of work, which on the main surface of it, it's about the same as most other alt currency creation to the fact that you need a worker that goes out and verifies transactions and you get compensated based on your effort. So not overall too different than most of the altcoins that you've probably mined before if you were a previous miner or if you're getting in, not a lot of change compared to that. However, I do want to point out that with this proof of work system, it uses a huge data set called a DAG, a DAG, which effectively is a localized database that it goes and uses. And why that matters is that has to load up into memory, the graphics card memory specifically. So there are some environmental variable considerations that you have to choose, especially if you have like the two gigabyte cards. Now we'll include those in the description below of some common settings that you need to do to make sure that if you do have an older mining rig that you're going to fire up and it does have a two gigabyte card, you need to have those set both with Linux and or if you're using Windows. Or you may get an error saying that you're out of memory. In addition to that little Quark. Ethereum have mentioned that at some point in the future, some people are speculating in 2017, but at some point in the future, they will move to a proof of stake methodology. And while that would absolutely disrupt mining as you're moving more towards a proof of your currency and stake versus actually hashing for it, as most development projects go, this is in the next version and most people, not even large companies hit their timelines. So now that we've covered a couple kind of backstory items, let's get into the actual mining and look what we put together for you here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the list of rigs that we're going to be covering in this episode. The R9 285OC Dual X Edition, a five card rig of that, a six card rig of an R9 280X, the actual XFX double dissipation, the R9 295X2, the R9 390, and an R9 380X Nitro Edition. And here at the end, we went ahead and sprinkled in an R9 Nano and an R9 Fury just to kind of do a sample test. And we only had a single instance of one of those cards, but we wanted to see what they could do. So let's jump into the first card here. We did a single instance of an R9 295X2. It pulled in a strong 50.2 mega hash at 430 watts. Now that watt rating was to the wall and it actually did include the PC. 
But one of the strong advantages of this card is that onboard water cooler, and it keeps the temperatures at bay and doesn't sound like a hairdryer when it's running. Now let's move to a rig that actually surprised me pretty well. The R9 285 Overclock Dual Xs. Now this rig, we had five separate cards on, and we went ahead and put it in and paired it up with that H81 BTC Pro motherboard. And out of the box was stock clocks. This thing pulled only 912 from the wall with all five cards running at a solid 100 mega hash. Now with a few slight tweaks to the clock, bumping it up to 1040 and 1500 on the memory, plus five to the power, we are able to pull up the wattage a little bit, pulling it to 1072 watts versus 912, but pulled up 101.8 mega hash out of it. Now we were pretty pleasantly surprised with that wattage. 912 on five cards is not bad for 100 mega hash. Next up, a good old favorite, an R9 280X six card rig from XFX. Now this one, we're actually doing our sample testing and we'll have a more deeper dive in another video with the ETH OS, which is a Linux based OS. But right now this rig is pulling a strong 125.4 mega hash. And we've paired it up with that EVGA 1600 watt G2 power supply. Now this thing's a powerhouse and Rockstar stable. Pull them from the wall at 1433 watts for all six of those cards. Next up, we brought in some new R9 380Xs, the Sapphire Nitro Edition. And out of the box, these things were very low wattage. With a core clock of 1000 megahertz, these four cards were pulling 771 watts from the wall, pulling in a strong 20 to 21 mega hash. Now with some slight tweaks to pull the core up to 1,075, we're able to pull a strong 84 mega hash out of this rig. Looking forward into a future episode of trying a full six card rig of these 380Xs, and more than likely we'll do one of those 380 rigs too. Now moving on, we went ahead and tried a pair of those R9 390s and see if they can hold the muster against the 290s that we have running strong. And sure enough, both of these out of the box, non-touched, are pulling 50.2 for the pair, averaging just over 20 25 for each card and with the PC plugged into the wall these pair were pulling 707 watts now the next two were only single card instances we wanted to see what they could do before we made the larger investment of trying to get six of these so we first start with the R9 Nano and I'll spend a little time with this one we did a lot of sample testing with this card in particular out of the box it was pulling about 19 mega hash and only pulling about 217 watts from the actual wall we went ahead and did the sample test with the card not pulling and just running idle just to see what the actual base computer was doing. And it was pulling about, as you see here, 49.5. So just about 150 watts for the power of this card. Now with some tweaking, we were able to get it up to 21 mega hash, but that was pushing the core up a bit. And by a bit, I mean 1175. At an 1175 core, this card holds strong at almost 22 mega hash. So we decided to also pick up an R9 Fury and we just didn't pick up a base model. We went ahead and picked up the ASUS Strict Edition. Now out of the box with this one, we were pulling 22 and it was pulling about 220 watts, which is surprisingly about close to the same as the Nano. And pushing that core clock to 1175, pulled her all the way up to 25 mega hash, nearly 26 mega hash. So that kind of goes to show that on these new Fury chips, they really like the core clock bumped up some. Now pairing them both together in a machine, we pulled a total of 410 watts from the wall and we're holding strong at 44 mega hash but as some would say the juice is not worth the squeeze on these particular cards not at the price points they're currently at so let's go ahead and pull up a few charts to show you kind of all the numbers that we have for these different rigs and I'll give you a cross comparison for you to do your own calculations and balance your own findings against this we always recommend people put in comments below and if you know some settings that actually work you know share them with the community now we're providing you a link below to this calculator that actually provides writes this chart and this is a good baseline that you want to check pretty often to see what is the profitability of the rig that you have and allows you to do some forecasting by changing the network hash rate and the price of ethereum to kind of see what your monthly output would be so i know we blazed through a few of this pretty quick but i wanted to get you guys started on understanding that gpu mining is back and there are lots of options out there now in our next episode we're going to be doing a deep dive on a 6x r9 390x which i'm calling kind of an extreme rig this is going to be a dual P psg you rig and i'm really looking forward to that in addition we'll do a quick coverage on an honorable mention on one of our old h 
the 7990s. Still a good old runner and pulling hard on Ethereum. Of course, that's not it. We got to bring you the extreme stuff and we're working on an extreme project. You know that old R9 280X toxic rig we did a while back? Yeah, so those cards are getting repurposed for something awesome. We can't wait to show you the final product on that one. In addition, we're going to keep trying to do small little vine type videos and put them on our channel to help people with the real simple stuff. 30 second style pro tips. We get a lot of questions on here and I can probably answer most of those very quickly through a video. We're going to try to keep those as kind of shorts, no more than 30 second and straight into the point. Let us know any of the categories you want us to cover, stuff like adding a second PSU or other pro tips on what to look for, something that could be short, clear and concise. And in the coming months, we plan on covering a deep dive on the Ethereum DAG file, how that's all going to work with the graphics card memory, and then what to look for as hash rates start to change. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Share this to your friends. Let's get some good content out there. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and we'll catch you later.